Good afternoon. On behalf of the National Collaborating Center for Indigenous Health, I would like to warmly welcome each of you to this webinar titled Indigenous Peoples Access to Health Services, Overcoming Barriers to Support Wise Practices. We have the special honor today of having Dr. Lisa Richardson as our presenter, who I will introduce in a few minutes. My name is Roberta Stout, and I'm pleased to moderate this webinar on behalf of the Collaborating Center for Indigenous Health. Our center, for those of you who do not know, is located at the University of Northern British Columbia in Prince George, BC, the traditional territory of the Tene First Nation. So very briefly, the NCCIH is one of six national collaborating centers for public health that was established in 2005 with funding from the Public Health Agency of Canada. Our sister NCCs are focused on specific topic areas, including infectious diseases, environmental health, healthy public policy, determinants of health, and methods and tools for knowledge translation. Our center is unique among the national collaborating centers in that we're focused on the health of a population. Our primary goal is to support health equity for First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples in Canada by promoting the use of Indigenous-informed evidence to transform practice, policy, and program decision-making across all sectors of public health. I'd like to introduce our presenter today, Dr. Lisa Richardson, a clinician educator in the University of Toronto's Division of General Internal Medicine. Dr. Richardson practices at the University Health Network. Her academic interests lie in the integration of critical and Indigenous perspectives into medical education, and she's an education researcher at the Wilson Centre. She holds the roles of Strategic Advisor in Indigenous Health for the University of Toronto's Faculty of Medicine and is also the Indigenous Strategy Lead for the Women's College Hospital. She co-leads a new portfolio for the Department of Medicine called Person-Centered Care Education. She chairs several provincial and national committees to advance Indigenous medical education and has been honoured with the Royal College of Physician and Surgeons Thomas Dignan Award for Indigenous Health. There are four learning objectives for today's webinar. The first is to examine how accessibility, availability, and acceptability of health services have direct and indirect impacts on Indigenous peoples' health and health outcomes. The second is to define wise practices and demonstrate its application in healthcare settings. The third is to explore how the frameworks of cultural safety, anti-racist practice, and trauma-informed care can strengthen leadership skills and ultimately Indigenous health equity. And the fourth is to understand, recognize, and identify opportunities to apply the concept of Indigenous allyship in leadership roles. So with no further ado, I'll turn this over to Lisa, 